Rules for the Spectre Flame wide open are pretty simple and rather traditional. Four cars run a group. The group does a round robin rotation per round, so every car sees every position at least once. Points are also of a traditional format. Five for first, three for second, two for third, one for last, and if you DNF, you get nothing. We fully expect this is going to be an exciting competition as it goes down through all six groups. From those six groups, the top two cars who survive in points will move on. As the group continues to windle, sorry, whittle down, we will finally have, after the initial six of four, we will then have three groups of four. And the top one of each of those groups move on to the finals. We hope you're here to enjoy this excellent competition. Welcome back, race fans. It feels like forever, hasn't it? We've been waiting in real time about six days between videos here in order for us to finally kick off this tournament. You have graphite, you have glistening paint, you have classic castings, brand new ones, ones that are 40 years old and ones that are freshly cracked out of the package. We've all waited a long time. And tonight, the first three groups plan to do battle. Let's get this show on the road. Welcome to group one of the Spectre Flame Wide Open. You have the number one qualifier in the inside lane, Shoebox. You have the number 12 qualifier in the outside lane, and that'd be King Kuda. The number 13 qualifier on the back inside, that's the Ford GT LM. And finally, the last place, number 24 qualifier on the outside, and that is the VW Bug. Commentary is going to be interesting. I expect a lot of action, and I may not be able to keep up with all of it. But the camera at least moves a little bit faster than my mouth does. So let's do this thing. And a rock. As expected, Shoebox takes the lead and then flips. What in the world happened there? The GT takes the lead. There's King Kuda in second. What happened to our knight in shining armor here? Shoebox with that epic flip. And last place, the Beetle. Stalls on the tunnel straight. Well, we're already off to an interesting start, as the fastest qualifier also ate shit in one of the corners, and therefore got nothing. As we have rotated the grid now, our second place in points leads off in the hot road, right on the lane one. And a car who did not finish at all sits on the outside of the front row. Our points leader is in the back, and our fastest car is in the back. Let's get it. And they're off. It's a tight group, but somebody falls off. Nose to tail. Nose to tail. And a bump draft into the box. The 4GT brings up the rear. One hell of a crash. What happened to the VW Beetle? I don't even see where it went. This isn't good. Round 3, Group 1, and we did find the VW Beetle. With closer review in the video, we managed to find out that the 4GT got impatient and literally shoved him off the track. Now, 
they share the front row. And so we go. Hopefully with a little bit less calamity. It's the Ford GT with the lead this time. All four of them nice and tight. Apparently the Beetle getting the kick he needed. <laughs> but right at the end, loses it across the line to King Kuda. Round four and final rotation, and the VW Beetle finally, after receiving one hell of a knock, gets a point on the board. Will he continue that trend? Well, we can hope anyway. Into the spiral, it's Shoebox out with a lead. The GT is chasing him, but Drifty Shoebox with a commanding win. <laughs> and everybody wrecks into each other at the line. But hey. The Beetle actually finished. Just for giggles, what did Shoebox run? That's an 8-4, which solo would have been enough to get him inside the top 10. And there you have it, two down. As the points show you, it's not just speed. It is consistency. The hollow is a cruel mistress. And incredibly, the fastest car is already gone. On to group two. As group one showed, the classic tagline of anything can happen at the hollow still applies. Let's call Group 2 our Classics Group. These are all nice heavy metal and metal cars. You have the classic Custom 68 Mustang. And on the outside you have Nitty Gritty Kitty, which also is a casting from 1968. In the back <laughs> you have Wind Splitter, an excellent 50 gram casting that dates back from the very early 80s. And, of course, the classic Nomad, which is another late 60s casting. All these guys are heavy. All these guys have been fast. Well, let's sort this one out. Let's get it. And they're all a fast group going down into the spiral. The Mustang has the lead. A couple drifts. Nitty Gritty Kitty reeling him in hard. <clears throat> and then loses it at the last second. And the Nomad... First DNF. In an event that you could consider advantageous, the car that did not manage to finish the race at all now sits on the front row. He shares it with Nitty Gritty Kitty, the car that was featured in our video on the newly christened, or should I say rechristened, Diecast News Report. Which, by the way, guys, thanks for the shout out. In our back row, we had the classic Mustang and Wind Splitter. Once again, two very fast castings. In fact, the Mustang was second fastest at qualifying. Let's see how we shake out. Nitty gritty kitty. With the lead, somebody hits the tunnel. Can't tell who. It's Nitty Gritty Kitty. No, the Mustang at the line. The Nomad finishes. And what happened to Wind Splitter? I do believe he was the one that bronged the hell out of that tunnel. That was an awful noise, wasn't it? Rotation 3 with Group 2, and now both cars that have DNFs in the point standings are on the front row. I swear to God that I don't do this intentionally. This is just the way it works out. The two faster cars, Nitty Gritty Kitty and the 68 Mustang, are in the back now. And how about 
that epic steal by the Mustang in the end of the last race. Now they share the back row, and we're going to see who fights to the front. Into the spiral, four in a line, it's Windsplitter. The Mustang somehow in second, takes a hard charge at him, but Windsplitter finds his bearings. Who on earth finished fourth? Rotation 4, Group 2, and the points race. It's going to be a hell of a race for second, but that's it because the Mustang is locked in. What a devastating performance that car has had. And here it is on the front row, ready to show taillights to just about everybody for the fourth time. And here we have seven points, a tie already for second between Wind Splitter and Nitty Gritty Kitty. But the Nomad, with some sheer luck, and only three points behind both, could come back out of nowhere and steal this all. There's only one way to find out. Into the spiral side by side, the Mustang comes out ahead. All three green cars, nice and tight with each other. Mustang with the winds, wind splitter, nitty gritty kitty spit. And they both fail to finish. What a terrible loss that is. And so the point shook out. You already knew the Mustang had it locked in. It was an incredible performance, right from the word go. But Windsplitter woke up comparatively late before cementing himself into the final. To our other two competitors, we value your time, but you're not sticking around now. We'll see you with the next group. And the last group of the night, friends, here it is, group three. And on the front inside, we have Split and Image, which demonstrated an incredible amount of speed and stability, and was the third place seed in qualifying. In the outside row, you have the Custom 15 Mustang GT, which is an ID car, which exhibited maybe not so much speed, but excellent stability. On the back inside, we have the Subaru Brat which is an incredibly heavy, small sport pickup truck, so over 50 grams. And on the outside, which perhaps had a, a disappointing performance due to a late slide, we have the Audi R8, which could provide a wild card performance now that he's in a group. Enough talking, though. We got to do some racing. Split image predictably out front. The other three tight on each other. It's down to the line, and the Audi fails to finish, and the Mustang is bowled across the line by the Brat. Group 3, Round 2, and the first rotation, we have the ID cars sharing the front, and the two heavy metal badasses in the back. Let's get some. Look at that tight group going into the spiral, coming out, staying incredibly tight. Split an image with a big move, and it's a mess coming down to the line. Round three, rotation two. Points leaders in the back. Guys desperately needing points in the front. ID's on the inside, metal on the outside. I say we have a hell of a race. Into the spiral, it's a Subaru Brat. The Audi getting up beside him. Somebody gets shoved off. It appears to be the points leader, the 15 Mustang. And once again, one hell of a tight finish down to the wire. And the Mustang getting bumped off.
And with our final rotation of the night, we have metal in the front. We have IDs in the back. And it could be anybody's race. The point spread is between 10 with split and image and 5 with the Audi. Which means that, well, anything is possible. Although a few random events would have to happen to really have some spark fly. But let's get it. Into the spiral with split and image. The Brat taking second with a spin though. What's going on down here? What on earth finish was that? And the two metal cars advance and tell the New Age Whippersnapper ID cars to go to hell and become the first two cars to start Group 2 of the semifinals race. Beyond that, in our next video, we have the final three other groups. All vying for position to get into the semifinals. This has been a production of Poverty Hollow Adult Diecast Racing. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.